The killing of George Floyd has sent shockwaves across America. The Black Lives Matter movement has galvanised communities with protests in every state. Professor of International Politics Indajit Palmer at City University London says this could go down in history as a defining moment in the US. I think this may be uh, one of those key historic moments. I think a very large number of kind of longer term and short term things have come right together. And I think uh, it could well be a kind of generational moment that everybody will remember, but it will have an effect on American society and I think on the world too for a long time to come. So when you look at this particular George Floyd uh, killing by the police uh, and the protests, which have been multiracial right through and which are nationwide, every single state, small towns to large cities, um, and they have been very, very uh, widespread in that way. And then you've got the compounded uh, effects of the COVID-19, particularly on African-American communities, but across the board as well, with something like 40 million people unemployed. And then you've got people going to food banks and so on. And you've got that kind of healthcare issue where people are very worried about everything, lack of protection and a lack of treatment and uh, testing and tracing and so on. So you've got all that kind of combined, but also it's combined with a kind of long-term generational shift of millennials who fundamentally disagree with the way in which the whole American system has treated them. And the response with the United States at home has been violent, and the response internationally has been increasingly coercive as well. So I think what we've got is a, a kind of key moment, and I think everybody's looking now to November. Despite the protests against police brutality, Professor Palmer is concerned that the reforms wanted will not be sufficient enough. You know, you can have this massive public demand and it's very, very powerful at the moment. But what it really requires, if you like, A, is a sense of crisis, which we have. B, you need leadership among elite politicians who believe change is absolutely necessary, who can then harness this mass opposition in order to produce some sort of viable policies. And that's where I think I probably have a few doubts as to how far reaching any particular reforms might go. You recall in 2014, the, the up, uprisings in Ferguson, Missouri, which, you know, very, very powerful, but led to very little change indeed. And now Barack Obama is calling for police reform. He didn't really reform very much of the police force while he was in, although police killings were multiplying during his own two terms in office. Professor Palmer believes the White House stunt by the church could not have gone much worse, with Trump's own staff being critical. But the White House Press Secretary, Kayleigh McCanny, compares the walk to Winston Churchill. The very idea of an American president forcibly getting the police to clear a path uh, so that he can have a photo opportunity outside a partially damaged church uh, has been horrifying to most people. Uh, even the Secretary of Defense called him out on that. And the ex-Secretary of Defense, uh, James Mattis, has certainly been very critical. He compared Trump's divide and rule strategy to the Nazis as a divide and conquer strategy. That Trump hasn't even tried to unify the nation and that this is the culmination of three years of division and uh, pouring petrol on the flames. With calls for change on home soil, with the mayor of Washington renaming streets near the White House, Professor Palmer believes it will impact the US globally, with China watching on after Trump backed the Hong Kong protests. They're calling a Trump a hypocrite, where on the one case in Hong Kong, he lords protesters as standing up for democracy against repression and so on. On the other hand, he advocates very large scale repression in his own case. But you would expect China, China to come back with that. And they, they are probably loving this particular moment for those particular reasons. But they have that deeper reason too, because President Trump has waged a tariff war on China. Uh, he is also kind of ramping up uh, the whole idea that the pandemic uh, was a deliberate leak or an accidental leak from a, a virology institute in Wuhan. He's called it the Chinese virus or the Wuhan virus. And he kind of played the politics of the yellow peril. In the British case, I think it also, it means that the U.S. has less, looked less to for global leadership. The U.S. has decided, if you like, under Trump in particular, although not exclusively, uh, 
that it is, uh, it is going to extract as much value from every relationship, every alliance and partnership and international institution. So when you talk about the trade deal uh, after Brexit, then I think you, you can expect to have a very, very hard bargain, which is going to open up the NHS, the financial sector, the food sector, and others uh, to greater levels of American competition. And that could be very severely damaging to quality and standards and so on. 